Right, so higher revision using the 1997 paper. In the 90s, the papers were long, they were four and a half hours, so they covered quite a bit of material, so they're quite useful for a revision then. So the format here would be, before each question, pause to read and then do or try the question, and then check your progress with the following video, and then continue the same way throughout this and subsequent videos throughout the whole of papers one and two. Right, so question one. You give three points and a diagram to help you visualise it. You need to find the equation of PS, which is the altitude, which it also points out. It's a right angle, so it's made it very easy for you. It could just have given you those three points and then said find the altitude from P and you've had to figure out the rest yourself, remembering which was the altitude, which was the median and which was the perpendicular bisector. Well, the altitude, altitude is the distance straight up and down, so it's the one that hits the right angles. But it's been pointed out anyway. So the technique is, for a line you'll need a point on it and its gradient. How are you going to get its gradient? I know a point on it, I don't know the other point, but I've got a comparison line. Get the gradient of QR, so that'll be the first bit. Gradient of QR, which will be the difference in the Y coordinate over the difference in the X coordinates. And you could just take it from the numbers there. Quite often it's safe just to write them down. I'm going from negative 2, negative 2 to 4, 1. Although the diagram makes that a bit superfluous. So that I've got 1, take away negative 2. I'll just be a bit cheeky and put plus 2. 4, take away negative 2. Same again. I'll jump the gun a bit and just put 4, plus 2. So that's 3 over 6, which is a half. And so this is perpendicular to it. That means that the perpendicular gradient will be the one that multiplies it to give negative 1. Or just think of it as the negative of the reciprocal. So that'll be negative 2. And then you can go with the equation of PS. Using that displaced form of the equation of a line, there are many forms. You only know this one basically, plus the y equals mx plus c. And feed the numbers in. Maybe again, although it's a bit superfluous, it's in front of you. It's often safe to put down the point you're going to be using for the a and the b. So we've got we've got y minus the five is the gradient, which is negative two times x minus the x coordinate, take away negative plus four. Then of course there's various rearrangements you can do. There are no fractions in this, so I go for what I consider the best form which is the y equals mx plus c form, because that shows you everything. So you've got y equals negative 2x minus 8 uh, plus 5, so that'll be minus 3. And that's that one done. Only three marks. Right, so it's question two now. So pause and try question two. Question two. Another typical one, show that three points are collinear. This time it's three dimensional points, so you're not be using the gradients. But then you can use this vector method in two dimensions though, if you wished. Well, the technique would be that these three points will be in a line if the direction from A to B is the same as the direction from B to C. And of course they join up, which means I want to find the displacement the move that goes from A to B. Now there's various combinations. Sometimes this question's got a second part, which then says, after proving they're collinear, find the ratio in which AB cuts that line. Well, if that's the case, the best two to choose are AB and BC, because then I've got directly the comparison of the two halves of that line, or rather the two parts of that line. Well, AB, what's the displacement that takes me from A to B? Well, B minus A. The reason being, if I've got two points and some origin, and I know how to get to A, and I know how to get to B, and I want to figure out how to get from A to B, then the basic technique in vectors is, if there's some path that I don't know, that I want to know, then I start at the beginning of it, and follow any other paths that I do know, till I get to the end of it. And a path I do know, is I know how to get back to the origin, and I know how to get to B. Well, 
the vector that goes from the origin to any point is called its position vector. So that's the position vector of B, just sharing the components as the same numbers as the coordinates. This is the opposite direction, that's negative A, which means going from A to B is just going to be negative A plus B, or if you like, B plus minus A, B minus A. So we'll put these down, just taking the numbers from here. So we've got 2, negative 1, 4, take away 1, 3, 2, let's place that symmetrically, 1, negative 4, 2. So that's the move that goes from A to B, get us out of the road just now. Makes that nice wee face. Then, going from B to C, is that going exactly the same way, or is it squint? We will find out. So that'll be C minus B. So put the numbers in for that. We've got 4, negative 9, 8. Take away the B, which we had before. 2, negative 1, 4. And that's going to give me, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to just knock out this point A now. 2, negative 8, 4. And I'm going to remove the rest of this diagram because it's always looking at it that you've got one of them's twice the other. But I should really make a quick check because it's only going to be they're only going to be multiples of each other if all the components are the same multiples of each other. So I'll do it with a large one. Look at this one here. So it's two over negative one is the same as eight. Negative eight over negative four is the same as four over two is. They all cancel out to the same thing, two. So they're all the same multiple each other. Now the way I wrote that out, put the big one on top. Maybe I should have done it the way first, because it's actually better to express A B as a multiple of BC, if later on it's going to ask you for what's the ratio in which B divides the line AC. Because I'd rather have AB to BC. So I'll write it that way. So from this, I can see that AB is a half of BC. Rather than putting BC as a half of AC, AB, which I know is the same thing. I don't worry about it really. And then the conclusion from that is, if that's a multiple, then it must be going in the same direction. That means that AB is parallel to BC. That's the first thing. In order for these points to be collinear, at least they've got to be heading the same way. So they have to be parallel. But being parallel doesn't mean they're joined up. Parallel lines, there's loads of parallel lines that don't join together. They would only join together if they shared a point. So I'll have to put that condition as well. Since they've both got the point B in it, since B is a common point, that's the second part of it, that means that A, B and C were in fact collinear. And that's the end of the question for that part. Now had it gone on to say, find the ratio in which B divides AC, well having this way is ideal, I'll put it down just now. If AB is a half of BC, then the length of AB is a half of the length of BC. Just taking that over, AB over BC makes a half. That's the ratio. AB to BC is 1 to 2. Instead of writing it as common fractions, you could write it as AB to BC is 1 to 2. But that wasn't in this question. Right, so that been done. Now, now, pause and try question three. Question three. Now, right, I don't get this. Questions one and two were worth three marks each. This question is worth four marks. And it's as trivial as this. It just says, find f of g of x and then g of f of x. Well, f of g of x is just going to be f acting on whatever g of x produces which is sine x plus cos x. And what f does to anything it gets hold of is doubles it. So it's just going to double that. Well, I suppose I could set it out a wee bit instead of jumping straight in with 2 sine x cos x just to try and justify these marks that they're throwing away. Or not throwing away, throwing at you. What's that one done? Presumably that's two marks worth. Well, I complain if they're going to do that. What's the other one? G of f of x. Ooh. Well, what does f of x do? It doubles a number. So g is going to act on 
2x. What does g do to anything it's hold of? It separately does the sine of it and adds on the cosine of it. So it's going to have the sine of it and it's going to add on the cos of it. Ooh, tricky stuff. I'll write it out again just to make it level with this and make it look more like four marks worth instead of one. And there it is, four marks worth. And finally, try question four. Question four. Hey, only three marks this time. Now, this time there's two vectors here. Those are position vectors. Position to a vector of a point P, position vector of a point Q. But not given directly in component form, but in terms of the unit vectors in each of the three directions at right angles that make up the coordinate system. The x, the y, and the z, looking at it in this direction. Where? i is a unit step in the x direction, j is a unit step in the y direction, and k is a unit step up the way. So basically all that's saying really is that you're going to take for this vector one step back three steps in and four steps up. Same for Q. That's going to be seven steps forward, one step back and five steps up. Just change it into component form first of all. Then, what does the question actually say? What's PQ? Notice if it's not asked you for a displacement before, not too long ago. So it's going to be Q minus P. So that's going to be 7, negative 1, 5, take away negative 1, 3, 4, which is then going to be 7 plus the 1 is 8, negative 4, 1. That's two marks. And part B says, what's the length of PQ? I'm going to fit that here for part B. Well, the length, that's just Pythagoras in three dimensions. So for the length of PQ, I'll put it down here, B. I think this pen is dying. So for part B, the length of PQ, that'll just be the square root of these three parts. A squared, 8 squared, plus negative 4 squared, plus 1 squared. So that's going to be 64 and 16 and 1. That adds up to 81. So that's going to come to 9. To say units because we're not sure what it's all been measured in. Nine units, another three marks.